Happy New Year, uh, welcome back to Motor Thoughts. I'm James and I've just bought myself a 19 year old Mark IV Golf GTI 1.8 Turbo. For the price of, well, well, the price of a laptop these days, the price of uh, a fancy cruise around the Caribbean, not that you can go on a fancy cruise around the Caribbean, but yeah, I got this for £1,900, which is a bit of a bargain. It's done 120,000 miles, and like I said, it's a 19 year old car, so, you know, an old car, like an old person, they start to develop problems, things start to go wrong, they get a bit leaky. That being said, this is a Mark IV Golf, they're fairly reliable, and I've always loved the look of them. I've, I just think they're a timeless design, sleek, elegant. This one's in great nick, like, to say I'm happy with it is a bit of a, bit of an understatement, really. I'd say I'm, I'd say I'm smitten. Yeah. Initially did about 150 horsepower when it first came out. Definitely doesn't do that now, but it still has some poke. Mark III Golf GTIs and Mark IVs both got slated by the automotive journalism press. Reason being, a lot of them didn't feel they were true Golf GTIs. The Mark I GTI and the Mark II, they came out, they were light, they were fun. But then the Mark III came out and you know, VW had to add a lot more weight to the car just because of crash testing, safety standards, and it sort of lost a bit of its character. This came out, and they, they'd made a lot of improvements, but it was still slated. The main point, I would say, is that it just, well, as you can see from the front, it doesn't say GTI, and you'll see from the back, where's the exhaust? Where's the exhaust? It's a Golf GTI, but where's the exhaust? Well, it's down here. And it's there. It's, it's a shame you can't have the exhaust exposed on a, a sporty hot hatch like this. So um, that's something I might actually change. If you're a normal person, you're going to walk around this and think, that's just a Golf. After this particular Golf GTI, they bought in the R32, which looks amazing. Uh, for everyone was like, okay, look, they've learned their mistakes and they've come back and they've bought this. Obviously, VW brought out the Mark V. They're rounded, they got fat. You know, I could have probably maybe afforded a Mark V Golf GTI, but I don't want a Mark V Golf GTI because they look ugly. Um, also, those those wheels with the holes cut out, like the cheese wheels came out, and I've always hated the look of those. Anyway, so why have I gone and bought a car that was slated by automotive journalists? Well, it still has some poke, it's still a GTI. R32 was based off the Mark IV. And there's no reason why you could sort of make some changes to this Mark IV Golf GTI to sort of get thereabouts on the, uh, to the R32 in terms of performance. Anyway, that's, that's enough rambling. Um, it's freezing. It's a cold January morning. Um, let's go for a drive. So initially it had 150 horsepower. So it could do 0 to 60 in about 8.3 seconds. Well, we've just had started lockdown for the third time again, so I'm not gonna. Well, I shouldn't really be out filming this video, so I'm not gonna test the 0 to 60 on it. I will take this out onto the motorway, but I, I reckon it's about 10 seconds, 9 seconds to 60. It's probably lost about 20 horsepower or so. That's just my estimate. Not that it made a ton of difference, but for the petrol heads out there, it will, it's the sort of thing you'd pick up on. And the Mark IV Golf, this very Golf GTI, has hydraulic steering, hydraulic power steering that is, which means there is a real direct connection to what's happening on the road. The Mark V uh, Golf, they brought in electric steering, electric power steering, but hydraulic steering in general is something that's really sought after in performance cars. McLaren, for instance, all their new cars, most of their models have hydraulic steering. And that's because you know, it gives proper feel and there's a, a real connection to the road that way. A downside to it is that at lower speeds, so particularly when parking, hydraulic steering it does make the steering very, very heavy. But for me personally, I'm a young guy, I'm not that bothered by it. It's a bit of a workout for the arms. Um, but hey, I'm young and healthy. So the peak power is around 5,700 revs. And that means that you can really use the power throughout the rev range. It 
it red lines just after six and a half thousand revs I haven't gone anywhere near there again it's an old car I don't really want to test it that much I don't want things to go bang the brakes are definitely not up to scratch despite having discs all round um, there is a lot of feel in the brake pedal though you can feel like even with the ASR off so that's no traction control no anti-lock braking you can get a response from the pedal and you you, you know you realize that the pe uh, <laughs> that the wheels are about to lock up so it's good in that sense it has feel but it doesn't exactly have a lot of power I mean, it's partly because it's an old braking system it's partly because well it's a heavy car as well it has a curb weight of about 1178 kilos which is is a lot lighter than the new golf um, I believe that's around 1300 kilos this is probably it's probably not picking up at all the turbo it's very faint but it is there it's enough to keep you amused so it's supposed to have about 210 newton meters of torque that's around 1700 revs the turbo it sort of only really kicks in after well after 2000 and even then if you're sort of on half throttle the turbo doesn't really kick in at all you have to be all the way that was in third gear you can't really hear it but um the turbo is what makes the engine sound good if the turbo wasn't there it'd sound pretty dull disturbed by bumps rather worryingly Ooh. yeah the dampening in this isn't well it, it feels 20 years old I think um, that will be one of the things to change after a uh, after um, air intake and exhaust I think Doing something to the suspension um, is a must. Just lowering it slightly and I don't know, putting some new damp dampers on it would be, would be great. It does corner well, but like I say, it, it needs to be on a flat, consistent piece of road where um, you know you can have the confidence to really chuck it in. As you can see, 16-inch alloy wheels on the front and back for obvious reasons. Um, these are actually BBS. Uh, let's stay. Um, these are actually BBS wheels that came on stock. Um, for those of you who don't know BBS, they make motorsport grade racing wheels. Um, we also do wheels for sports cars, and they've done wheels for this Golf GTI. Um, so it's 288 millimeter discs on the front, and I believe uh, those were actually vented originally, but as you can see, they've been replaced. Uh, not a problem, but yeah, originally they would have been vented discs on the front and on the back, 232 millimeter um, brake discs. I need a boot mat in here really, but I've got a spare wheel, uh, change all of that, <laughs> my camera equipment, um, but it's a pretty good boot. It can take about 1200 liters of storage. It's a handy 12 volt in the back for all, all sorts, I guess. Um, yeah, pretty good boot and the seats go down even in an old car like this. So as you can see, 20 valve turbo. I believe the turbo is housed behind the engine. But yeah, it's a pretty big engine. Pretty big. So anyway, I've sort of spoken a bit about driving on country roads. I will need to do another video of this once I've lived with it for a bit longer. I've only had it for a few weeks now. So let's find a motorway and see what it's like on that. So as, all, as I've already said, it's got quite a bit of pull, which is very handy for going onto the motorway. And um, it's just rather infuriating when you get lots of slow drivers. But anyway, so there, doing about 
80 miles an hour and it does about 3,300 revs. So as you can imagine, it's pretty good for fuel economy. I reckon it does about 40 miles a gallon, miles per gallon, I should say, thereabouts on the motorway. It is obviously a bit noisier being on the motorway, but um, the wind noise isn't too bad. I think um, it's because the mirrors are quite small. We're not, they're not massive, they're pretty sleek. So the wind noise from those at least isn't too bad. The sound deadening overall, I mean, it's not like a Rolls Royce, but it's pretty good. And um, yeah, so on a full tank, it should be able to do about 420 miles. Um, I haven't properly tested that. I reckon it probably could do a lot more than that on the motorway. But even at 80 and 3,300 revs, it picks up quite, quite quickly. It's very smooth. Uh, I mean, the 70, sorry, 70 miles an hour, yes, all in all, a very good car for the motorway, this was pretty much built for the Autobahn, if you think about it, where there's no speed limit, so as you can imagine, it's great for motorway, motorway driving. And as you can see, I've gone for a five-door model, yeah, um, <coughs> ideally I would have gone for a three-door, just because they look cooler, but anyway, the these are more practical. Um, point to mention is um, the seats at the back, they're, they're slightly raised. Um, so you're sitting higher than the people in front. Um, that also means there's slightly less headroom, but like I say, I'm just under six foot and it's pretty good. So the only thing that I found that doesn't actually work in this whole car is this light. Apart from that, it all works. Believe me, you'll see. Well, look, there's a bit wear and tear there, but it's literally just on the driver's seat. Um, and look, look at them, Recaro. Race grade seating. It's a proper leather steering wheel. Look at this. You've got two proper cup holders, and they take um, large takeaway coffee cups, which is impressive. It's very impressive, um, and they're stu sturdy, they're stable, you know, normally on a Golf, you'd get a Golf ball um, gear stick, but this, this is just a walnut, I mean, it does, it does look really nice, I have to say, that this walnut here, around, um, initially when I saw pictures of this car online, I thought, oh god, no, what is it, but actually, I've really grown to like it, and it's sort of dark walnut, um, and in normal lighting, it actually looks quite good. Oh, I'll tell you what. Look. Look at that. Still works. Look at that. And it, it. Look, it works. So you can, at night, you can do your makeup. <laughs> I need to put lots of that on. It's look, look like this. The pedals aren't very special. They're just plastic. Um, Something I think I might change, I might put some, I don't know, some metal caps on these to to just make them look a bit nicer. Not for showing off, just for just for me, really. Electric windows, for all the windows around there, and they all work. That's the main thing, it's the sort of thing you expect to go wrong in an old car like this. So to listen to my tunes, you, get, you can get one of these on Amazon for about 10 quid. Other retailers are available. Um, and it's pretty handy, you just stick this in and it connects up to your phone and you can listen to, and pick up calls as well, uh, and listen to music. Yeah, so it's a good surface, it's not, um, it's not cheap plastic, I mean it is plastic, but it's not cheap. Uh, the heating works, it's all good, ASR is the traction control and anti-lock brakes. And here you've got control for how, how bright your, um, your dashes and how far up and down uh, your headlights are. Glove box, it's pretty good. We've got the old manual that it's come with, all the old papers and documents. So then we've got here's a vehicle diagnostics tool, very handy. Uh, and then the Golf, if you know engine warning light came up or something, you just plug it in there, and then. It tells you exactly what's wrong with the car so you don't have to spend a fortune going to a, a garage for them to literally just plug something in. 
for rear view mirror is it's got a special film on it you can sit sort of worn away there but it's good so um, at night time it sort of dips um, dips reflection so you're not blinded by cars in your, in your rear view mirror which you're gonna be in this car right so this is a Golf GTI yeah so you, you know you're gonna be overtaken It's got five gears, which on the motorway is a bit of a, well it could do with a sixth gear really. I know the gearbox, it feels solid. I have to say the clutch feels incredible for a car of 19 years old. It's really light to use. And it does about 190 grams of CO2 per kilometer, which, which isn't that bad. I mean, there are SUVs that do well over 200 grams of CO2 per kilometre and they, you know, they've come out just this year or the year after, for instance. So, I mean, it's not going to destroy the planet. This is, a, this is a petrol. It's important to make that point because obviously there's a TDI model, um, turbo diesel injection. This isn't one of those. Anyway, so it has a turning circle of about 10 metres, which, oh. Isn't quite. Oh, it is good enough to do that. There we go. Um, its turning circle was 0.9 meters shorter than the Mark 8 Golf, so that's a point to the Mark 4. Around town, it's soft and it's comfortable. Around um, around speed bumps, it takes them pretty well. What a lovely day! It's been miserable this week, and now. Now the sun's out, all is good. Um, where are we going? Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Stay tuned because I'm going to do some more vids on this golf. Um, little changes, maybe taking on some road trips, hopefully. Um, and, you know, if we're not in lockdown forever. I'll also be reviewing some other cars uh, of friends in the coming weeks, I hope, despite the lockdown. I've been James, you've been watching Motor Thoughts. Subscribe and like if you've enjoyed the video. and. Uh, Stay tuned guys. <laughs>